Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Lark and my book this week is a story about the first Thanksgiving, but it's an interesting book because um, it is told from the Native American perspective and the perspective of the foods that were growing on the land at the time. There's a lot of very tricky words in here because it's from the Wampanoag language. And I like to read a little intro before we begin reading about it. And I really hope you enjoy learning a little bit about the history behind Thanksgiving. So here we go. Before you begin. Before you begin, this is the tale of the harvest feast shared by the newcomers newcomers and the Wampanoag people in 1621. The newcomers arrived in what is now Plymouth, Massachusetts and colonized the ancestral homeland of the Wampanoag tribes. At the time of the first Thanksgiving, many tribes lived in the same area. They're often known as Indians or Native Americans. In this story, we call them first peoples because they were the first to live on this land. The Wampanoag people have taken care of their land and tended their gardens for at least 12,000 years. The Wampanoag people hunt fish and raise the three sisters, which are corn, beans, and squash. Over time, First Peoples developed deep, deep knowledge about the ways that many plants, often called medicine, help bodies and minds stay healthy. Then they give us a whole list of important words to know. The first one, is Keepanuk, the time of harvest, Nasump, a traditional Wampa, Wampanoag dish, Nukumas, which means grandmother, Usam Mikwan, the leader of the Wampanoag tribes, Succotash, which is a soup made from corn, beans, and squash, Tisquantum, a Wampanoag man, also known as Squanto, Turtle Island, a name used by many First People for North America. Wampanoag, the First People's Tribe, which means people of the first light. We are Chuman, which means corn. And we too, a traditional Wampanoag home. So a lot, as I said, challenging words. So we're going to do our best and hear the story. Here we go. I love your garden this time of year, said Maple. Me too. What shall we pick for lunch? Masma said. How about crab apples? Maple suggested. No, choke cherries, Quill shouted. Those are both good medicine. Ukama said. How about some we achim as well? Which means corn. And then the uh, word which I was trying to say best is the word for grandma or grandmother which is Nukumas, Nukumas. Yes, Maple said. She is such a good big sister to beans and squash. The three sisters, they grow together, Quill added. You're right. They feed people all over Turtle Island. Nukumas said, and they all have many stories to tell. Can you tell us a story, Quill asked. How about the time Weachum asked our Wampanoag ancestor, ancestors to help the pilgrims? Nukumas replied, the first Thanksgiving, Maple asked. Some people call it that, Nukumas said. We call it Ki Umanak, the, the time of harvest. Here's what really happened. One frosty fall morning, a long time ago, a large boat with white sails approached the shore. Seagulls circled above the boat, squawking. New people are coming. New people are coming. Hearing the news, Weachum stretched her weary ears toward the sky. Who are these new people? She asked. Two winters had passed since many of the first peoples who cared for Weachum passed on to the spirit world. Those who were not taken by sickness found new homes to ease their heavy hearts and rebuild their lives. Weachum feared 
this winter would be her last and called upon Fox for help. Fox looked up at Weechamum. Should we trust these newcomers, he asked. Stay close and watch what they do, Weechamum told Fox. Now, if you can tell, Weechamum is the corn, the spirit of the corn. Fall turned to winter. Weechamum and the other plants fell asleep. Fox watched the newcomers come ashore. He watched as they made their way into the forest. He watched them enter and abandon Weetu. He watched them take a cooking pot and a basket of Weechamum seeds. Don't take us away, the seeds cried. We are waiting for the first peoples to come back in the spring to prepare our beds. We must grow first. But the newcomers could not hear the seeds. Their ears did not know the voices of the land. Fox watched the newcomers build homes on top of an empty village. He watched as they searched for food, but they could never find enough to eat. Many of the newcomers lost mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters during the long, cold winter. The first peoples watched as well. News traveled fast among nearby tribes that newcomers had arrived. Nobody was sure what to make of them. For many years, others had traveled across the sea to hunt, fish, and trade. Some were friendly and some were not. These new people seemed different. They were here to stay. Winter turned into spring. The sun warmed the earth. The newcomers continued their search for food. Weachum awoke from her long slumber and thanked the creator for another season. She and her sisters, beans and squash, pushed through the ground and reached toward the sky. Fox returned to share what he had seen. The newcomers are hungry, Fox told the three sisters. They took Weechamum's seeds, but they don't know how to help them grow. Other animals came to hear what Fox had to say. We should help, Weechamum said. I agree, Bean said. Our home is their home now. I think we should too, said Squash. People need help. People help us grow. We must help, Deer said. We agreed to feed the people. In return, they care for the home we share. I wouldn't, said Fox. The newcomers don't know our world. Sometimes new people can seem scary, Rabbit said. The creator tells us to help all living things. This is how the world works. Yes, Duck and Turkey agreed. It's settled, said Weechamum. We will send the first peoples to help the newcomers. Over the next few nights, Weechamum sent dreams to the first peoples with a message. Bring me and my sisters to the newcomers. They are hungry and need help. The first people listened. Their leader, Osamakin, visited the newcomers. He could see that they wanted peace. Osamum introduced the newcomers to Tisquantum. Spring turned into summer. Tisquantum showed the newcomers how to raise Weechamum and her sisters, beans and squash. He taught the newcomers how to feed fish and seaweed to Weechamum to help her grow. Soon Weechamum's seeds pushed through the earth and climbed toward the sky. Beans wrapped around Weechamum's strong stalks. Squash stretched her vines across the ground, keeping Weechamum's bed cool and moist. Summer turned to fall. Weechamum brimmed with food. So did beans and squash. Weechamum smiled at the newcomers as the newcomers thanked Tisquantum and the first people for their help. Keechamum, the first harvest had come. The newcomers prepared a feast to celebrate the first year in their new home. They fired muskets in celebration. Boom, boom, boom. Oskunum, the warriors and other first peoples arrived. They feasted for three days. That meal changed both our lives and theirs forever. Many Americans call it a day of Thanksgiving. Many of our people call it a day of mourning. 
That's different from what we learn in school, said Maple. It was Weechamum and the other beings of the land, sea, and sky who made the newcomers first ha harvest possible. That's right, Nukuma said. This is why we pray before we eat. Well, what did the newcomers and our ancestors eat? Nukumas Quill, Nukumas Quill asked. Many things, succotash, duck, turkey, rabbit, deer, lobster, fish, pumpkins, cranberries, boiled bread, and nasump, Nukumas said. All this talk about food is making me hungry, Maple said. Let's go make us some lunch then. And they all enjoy, and will enjoy every bite, said Quill. All right, and now you get to see a little picture about where the Wampanoag territory was and where the um, newcomers, or what sometimes referred to as the pilgrims, came when they first arrived in North America. All right, so there's lots of information in the back of the book, more about the Wampanoag people, the first peoples, because they were the first to live on the land. I hope you enjoyed the story, boys and girls. Did my best with pronouncing the words. I'm sure it wasn't perfect, but we can practice. All right, everyone, have a fabulous day and have a fabulous week.